Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Franchise Hockey Manager playthrough of the Chicago Blackhawks. And in our second year as General Manager slash Coach of the Blackhawks, we are the NHL Stanley Cup Champions. Was a uh, pretty shocking run to the Stanley Cup for the Blackhawks, particularly including the finals, where we came back from a three games to one deficit to beat the Ottawa Senators. When I dug into the standings a little bit more, our performance makes a little more sense. Our goal differential for the year was 34, plus 34, which was actually the best in the Western Conference, and it was, um, or the best in the Central Division, third best in the Western Conference, and it was actually, um, fourth best in all of hockey behind only the Lightning, the Ducks, and the Oilers. So although points-wise we finished up seventh in the Western Conference, uh, actually in terms of our scoring differential we were a better team than maybe we appeared to be as far as the number of points we scored during the season. So that was uh, one thing that I did notice that I thought was an interesting data point to share. share as we think about next season got a lot of work to do we have um, a number of players in the final year of their contract and we also have um, some burgeoning team harmony issues which kind of came up of, out of nowhere over the last couple weeks of the playoff run we've had a click form now and unfortunately given that our uh, captain and future Hall of Famer and now four-time Stanley Cup champion Patrick Kane and our starting goalie who is probably going to win the playoff MVP award are part of that clique. Uh, we've got to kind of uh, live with them I think. Um, so Cole Gutman is a 25 year old player who um, seems to have a reasonably severe conflict with Jared Anderson Dolan, one of the players in that clique. Uh, Gutman is actually in the final year of his contract. Um, he's kind of a marginal roster player for us. Um, you can see he was up for 21 games this year and only got a little over eight and a half minutes of ice time while he was up at the NHL level. So we will um, happily move on from Mr. Gutman Looking at the potential uh, players who are going to be available in free agency, there's actually a lot of interesting names when you look at potential free agents, but I would have to think that guys like uh, Matty Beneers and Sebastian Ajo um, in particular, as well as Lucas Raymond, you would think that um, these guys are going to be signed by their teams, even uh, Capo Caco, who was uh, traded by the Rangers to the Kings last year, would certainly love if some of those really young and really good players uh, do end up on the free market on July 1st, but certainly not counting on it. Our biggest potential decision is uh, Victor Arvidsson, who fought through an elbow strain, uh, delayed treatment on that to get through the playoffs, and it obviously ultimately paid off with a Stanley Cup championship. Um, a very dynamic offensive player who was an important part of our offense with 32 goals, brings almost nothing to the table defensively, but um, given that we are light on wings and we are a little bit light on scorers, we do have to consider bringing him back looking for about $5.8 million now, so that's a little lower than before. If we think about our team and we think about our cap obligations, uh, right now we are pretty close to the cap and we're at a little over $70 million for next year. So we certainly can afford to bring on Arvidsson and it probably is also time to think about um, moving on from Seth Jones, a very good player, but he is played like he is paid like he is a um, Norris Trophy winner, which uh, he has not been for us. Exceptional physical skills, pretty respectable defensively, uh, good offensive defenseman, decent mental ratings. Um, 
He was minus 11 for us this year, which was certainly disappointing. Still will leave us with a big hole on the team if we move on from him. But he is a player who is going to be turning 30 right about the start of next season, who is signed to a pretty high contract until his mid-30s. And uh, there are exceptions to the no-trade clause for him. So probably a player that we're going to want to move on from because although I always like to build a strong defense, um, we did make trades for Heronic and Anderson to kind of bolster our defense over the last uh, season or so. And both of those guys are signed for the future as well. So I think that the money that we have invested in Seth Jones probably can be put to better use somewhere else even if it's just getting a, a cheaper defenseman who's almost as good and, and a little younger so with that backdrop um, and the potential to open up some more salary money if we move on from jones we are going to make an offer to arvidson um he you know, as I talked about, had 32 goals in 69 games. And even though he was not um, in the lineup for all of our playoff games because he was so banged up with that injury that when his um, fitness level would get down into the 50% range, we'd sit him out for a game. He did play 14 games and uh, fought through the injuries to score seven goals and three assists for us in the playoffs. So, um, feel like he definitely should be rewarded with an extension not going to go for the long term um, particularly at his age he's a player that is um, likely headed towards the downside but again we need help on the wing he can play both both the right and the left wing he's a scorer which is always good to have um, I'd love to not sign him for three years if at all possible but um, probably will need to And we'll see what he thinks about five and a half million a year over three years. And he's willing to think about it. So hopefully save a little bit of money compared to what we thought we might be playing him. For most of the season, he was looking for over six million dollars a year. Obviously, he's got to come back from that injury. A few other decisions now. Um, Mike Hardman kind of had a down year this year. We have already, um, I believe, put him on an auto qualification. He's not looking for a ton of money at this point. Not the worst guy in the world to have as a third or fourth line winger. Um, need to think about him. And then Mackenzie Entwistle, another guy who we have already put the auto qualifying offer on also not looking for a ton of money if we could get either of these guys to agree to a two-way contract would consider bringing them back um, but honestly Michael Teple who we brought up this year is a little younger than those guys um, doesn't bring much to the table defensively which isn't optimal um, pretty good physical skills though good mental ratings generally and a decent offensive player uh, he's a guy who also can play both wing positions and is um, looking for a lot more money though almost three million dollars a year for four years so certainly not going to immediately bring him back we've got the auto qualify offer out to him so if uh, someone else makes an offer hopefully we'll get a chance to match it Dickinson is an interesting choice um, an interesting decision definitely um, with some of the additions we made in the off season he got about three minutes less of playing time this year and was a lot less productive on the ice when he was there like the fact that he's a solid defensive forward the grinder is his uh, primary role right now really comes down to money and almost four million dollars a year is getting to the point where we're willing to let him hit the open market it doesn't mean that we won't bring him back and he conceivably could be looking for even more money out on the open market but 
don't feel that we need to uh, chase him. Taylor Radish, um, decently well-balanced player. Um, had a nice year for us with 65 points in 66 games. The $3 million number is higher than I'd like to play pay, but... Um, definitely something that we need to think about I'm no I know I'm not really making any decisions here I'm just kind of talking through players and last but not least Philip Rose um, young defenseman if we can get him on a two-way would be happy to bring him back um, I think in a perfect world he doesn't have a huge role on our team going forward um, but for organizational depth would consider it Again, I don't know that he's going to go for a two-way. But if he will, um, then it's something that we would at least consider. So we're offering him $1.05 million. If he's in the NHL, seven hundred k in the minors. Wants a little more money. If we offer you 1.15, he really wants a lot. 1170. Just don't feel like this is a guy to press too hard on. If we can get him back at our level, great. But if he'll go for the two way at 1.18 million. All right, we'll see what he thinks. Um, he very well could be a player that we could be losing down the line if we have to waive him at some point to send him to the AHL. But the dollar value of the contract is not crazy, particularly if we might ultimately be moving on from Seth Jones. I'm uh, going to shop Seth Jones right now just to see what um, is out there in terms of options. I'm guessing none of them are going to be all that attractive to us. Um, our eight offers out there just want to see what the top just straight up draft pick offer we get I'm guessing it's gonna be like a fifth with no players involved actually we got a seventh and a sixth with players offered to us um, from the different teams I think when we get to July 1st and teams potentially have a lot more salary cap space that may be the time to move on from him and try to construct something um, there's not quite honestly much of anything that's all that interesting on the trading block right now you can see the top rated guys with um, the exception of Matthew Olivier are all guys who are on the final year of their contract um, wonder what his future contract looks like. Yeah. Two and a half thousand dollars a year for a good defensive winger. A little chippy. He might be a guy that we could consider trading for when we get to July 1st. Certainly don't feel like we need to uh, push to get him on board right now but hopefully there will be more players on the trade deadline or on the trade block but obviously we can search through teams and find someone who's got a need for a right defenseman who also happens to be on the relatively short list of teams that uh, Mr. Jones would uh, take away his no trade clause for which which certainly limits us would prefer to get him to the Eastern Conference also but um, that I think is more an activity for us to think about when we get to the start of the next season uh, on July 1st and I know I talked a lot in our last episode about how we need wingers but honestly with Tepli, Radish, Entwistle, and Hardman We've made the qualifying offers to all of them. I just don't feel like a huge need that we have to uh, get them signed before they hit the open market on July 1st, particularly knowing that our tentative plan right now 
is to try to move on from Jones and his contract. That'll open up a lot more money for us where hopefully um, we can bring back some of those players if it plays out in a way that we want to. And we'll also get a look at anybody else who's a uh, winger on the open market. And there's potential that we'll bring back someone relatively useful in a trade for Seth Jones also. So um, we've got the offer out there to Arvidsson. We've got the offer out there to Rose. Uh, we'll see what happens with those two guys. And good news that both Rose and Arvidsson signed their contracts. So happy to have both of those guys back. Uh, now when we're looking at cap obligations for next season, you can see that puts us at $77.5 million. So going to be even more important to probably move on from that contract with Seth Jones. Um, we are going to wait till July 1st to see who's actually available as a free agent um, before potentially trading him away. But that would certainly open up some money for us to bring a winger or two on board, maybe bring a Dickinson back, maybe bring one of the wingers we've been talking about back. Um, feel like we're pretty set at defense right now with the guys that we have signed, as well as some prospects in the system who should be helping us soon. I think we're fine at goalie with Blackwood and Stolars, so um, it's really just a matter of potentially moving on from Jones and then investing some of that money in the front line. And good news here that Arvidsson ready to re resume skating after uh, finally getting some treatment for that injury that he had delayed. We're actually going to put Bo Horvat back onto the active roster now because he'll certainly be healthy by next season. And uh, as we start uh, wheeling and dealing in July, I want to uh, have a good view of what the base roster that we hope to have next season is actually going to be looking like actually going to send Colton Doc back down to Rockford while we're thinking about it uh, he's not quite ready for the NHL at this point and there's definitely a few interesting players who are potentially free agents looks like Aho may end up out there um, Luke Kunin of uh, San Jose is also interesting to me. Uh, Elias Lindholm, also a little older, um, but if his demand is reasonable, we are clearly a win-now team at Chicago uh, trying to defend our uh, Stanley Cup championship, so have a little more flexibility, I think, to potentially take on a uh, player who's a little bit older. Fortunately for us, Dickinson is really the only prime guy who's going to be a uh, unrestricted free agent. So feel like particularly if we can execute on a Seth Jones trade, we're going to have the money available to sign one or two impact players if there's uh, players out there that, uh, that we like. And we've also got a number of guys whose uh, junior careers are coming to a close who we may want to sign. Uh, Gavin Hayes, who was a third round pick draft in 2022. Looks like he's got decent potential as a winger. Um, not the greatest defensive player in the world, but pretty good physical skills. Looks like he could be an interesting offensive player. player. Uh, he's 20 years old now. Probably time to uh, get him into the system so uh, we are gonna offer him an entry-level contract hopefully get him into the system as we talked about a lot we could definitely use some help on the front line particularly at left and right wing so he could be useful there a uh, few other players who um, we may want to think about bringing on Paul Ludwinski of the OHL, um, been at Kingston the last several years. Our scouts still see him as having a lot of potential. Um, trying to think, he 
just turned 20. So I think uh, I think that's it for his junior's career. Um, may want to make an offer to him also, bring him on to the uh, into the organization. We'll keep doing the same with a few other players, and then um, we've got a lot of other guys that we can think about when we get out of, um, get past the um, July 1st and the new, the new year. Obviously, at some point, we want to figure out what we're going to do with Frank Nazar. Um, looks like he was banged up, played only 16 games for Michigan last year. Um, but he is still someone who's not too, too far away. Um, I think his preference is probably to keep playing in college. Um, and I don't think he's quite ready to contribute at the NHL level. So probably let Nazar stay one more year at Michigan um, before we try to sign him. But got a lot of interesting decisions to make with um, some decent young talent that we have the rights to. And we did get Paul Ludwinski signed to that entry level contract. Uh, still waiting to hear back from Gavin Hayes and Michael Crutiel. Uh, hopefully, we'll hear back from those guys uh, very shortly. But we are to award ceremony time, and not a lot of nominees among the Blackhawks team. Uh, we did talk about in our last episode that for the Lady Bing, uh, we do have a nominee with Patrick Kane. And then obviously are expecting that a playoff MVP will be someone on our team. Uh, would have to think that it's going to be Mackenzie Blackwood or Dylan Larkin. I'd be inclined to give it to Mackenzie Blackwood given that um, it's several shutouts throughout the rounds of the playoffs and um, Larkin was obviously critical too as our top scoring throughout the playoffs so it, it'll be one of those two guys. If it was my vote I'd give it to Blackwood but I don't get a vote and I'd view Austin Matthews, who had a monster season, as the big favorite for the Hart Trophy. So, not surprising, Austin Matthews with that 70-goal season, the MVP, Con Smythe. It does go to Dylan Larkin uh, with the 22 points in 22 games. As I said, I probably would have given it to the goaltender, but I am uh, not the one who gets to make those choices. And... Uh, Obviously, as you, you probably saw here when I was talking about the lady being uh, clearly Patrick Kane did not win that. Uh, we'll take a look at all of the rest of the winners. No shocker to see Connor Bedard with a 74-point season. I believe is a 20-year-old. Uh, no, sorry, 18-year-old. Um, even more impressive, uh, the Rookie of the Year for the Islanders. Adam Fox of the Rangers with the Norris. Uh, Sorelli with the Selkie, John Gibson with the Vezina, and Pat Verbeek and Dallas Eakins winning the awards uh, for their work with Anaheim. And we did get Crutill and Hayes signed to their entry level contracts. Um, like there's increasingly more and more players who may be being shopped by their team so between that and the start of free agency uh, it's going to be interesting but um, we've got one day left and after the big season that the Blackhawks had winning the championship um, even though the regular season was not incredible uh, still going to have an opportunity to improve our skills which will be pretty important if we want to try to keep this job for the long term uh, season season score of 39 for us obviously a winning season reach the playoffs reach the finals and won the championship uh, so that gives us seven points to improve our skills we will up self-preservation a bit um, 
think we're going to put two each on negotiating, discipline, and player management. Um, kind of getting to the point where two years into this, we are at least um, getting respectable in most of our skills from the below average levels that we started with as far as being a GM, but want to negotiate contracts and want to kind of ensure that our uh, team is cohesive and as much harmony as possible. And I think that putting a little more into negotiating skill, discipline, and player management as opposed to just uh, desperately trying to save our job makes sense right now. So we will make those changes and uh, get ready for the flip to a new season. And we've simmed ahead to the new financial season on July 1st, uh, so we'll take a look at the key things that we need to be thinking about. Uh, newly signed Arvidsson, or newly re-signed Arvidsson, Kane, Horvat, Larkin, and Stolarz were the top-selling jerseys. Again, it just doesn't seem that Mackenzie Blackwood's getting enough love from my perspective. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, big retirements. Uh, check a look at our development report. Um, Horvat, not surprisingly at his age, uh, getting a little less strong, but some of our younger players that we have rights to seem to be improving a little bit. Top selling NHL jerseys for June. Clearly a lot of fans jumping on the bandwagon with uh, four of the top 14 selling jerseys being from our newly crowned Stanley Cup champions. And we've got a new broadcast deal worth almost $41 million a year. Uh, owner confidence, pleasantly surprised at how well we did. Yeah, um, fans thrilled with the team. No need to worry about our job. Uh, just hoping for a respectable finish. We gave them a championship instead. So yeah, it was a great year, no doubt about it. take a look at the annual budget. Uh, you may remember that we increased the capacity of the United Center last season. Um, and we sold out every game in the new United Center or the newly expanded United Center. Uh, given that we're coming off a championship, I think it's time to uh, raise ticket prices by $10. Um, got a lot of capacity to do things here. Player development, we're going to raise player development. Going to go with n normal marketing spending. I think a normal wage budget should be fine for us. Do normal maintenance. We want to do anything else with our seats. Um, I think we'll just kind of save the money at this point. Um, you know, like I said, we expanded last year, so and we sold out all this year. So now's a chance to generate some extra revenue by raising the fan prices, or raising the ticket prices by ten dollars. Um, we just delivered a championship fan interest is as high as it can possibly be so I think we're okay there but we'll wait on another expansion potentially um, or maybe there's no point in waiting um, got the money to do it now do we add the standing room capacity Yeah, let's add the standing room capacity now. Try to get as many people in there as possible while we have, um, we are, are very popular. Um, we'll up the marketing spend to a heavy marketing spend because we are going to have higher ticket prices and now another almost 1,200 seats to sell, although they aren't actually seats. Just a spot on a rail to maybe lean against don't know that we really need to increase the budget that much. Looking at our monthly choices, uh, we're going to keep scouting up, keep team morale up. Um, 
going to knock our uh, game promotions and arena operations down for the next few months because we are not going to be uh, having any games where we actually need people to attend. So a couple other things I want to do here before we finish off uh, this episode. Let's shop our buddy Seth Jones again. And uh, if I could remember that I can just right click on his name and I can shop him. That would be much easier. Guessing it's not going to be much different than what we saw. Actually, there's a lot more. Um, actually, no, there aren't a lot more teams involved. We've just got the exclamation point there because that's kind of a bug that uh, happens when you first flip over to a new season. So well, that's a little more interesting. A third round pick from the Blues. Um, so that's good to know that that's kind of um, worst case scenario, <clears throat> what we can get for him over the next... Um, 14 days in terms of uh, draft capital. So that'll give us an opportunity to dig in a little deeper with um, some of these um, teams that he's willing to go to and see if maybe we can get a better offer than that. Obviously, in a perfect world, the preference would be not to trade him to a team that is in our division that actually was ahead of us in the standings last year. But if we think that this salary is something that's going to become a bit of an albatross, it might not be the worst strategic move to trade him away to them, even though he is a very good player right now. Um, he, I just don't think he's a almost $10 million a year kind of player. Also take a look at the potential, uh, or not the potential, the actual free agents. And Sebastian Ajo somehow made it to free agency. Luke Kunin also out there. Um, there's some interesting guys for us to think about. Um, looks like the real young players, um, the Capo Cacos of the world that we were talking about, uh, did get signed before hitting free agency, which makes sense. Um, just to think about things, what's Aho looking for? $11.3 million, which is obviously a lot of money. But if we free up nine and a half million dollars by moving on from Mr. Jones, kind of gives us the opportunity to bring him on board. Um, that would obviously be about the only thing we could do this off season, but that would be a uh, pretty significant only thing to be doing. Um, Luke Kunin should be more reasonable in terms of his price. Oof. Yeah, barely four and a half million dollars. That may not be a uh, bad player for us to bring on, also, and that would, um, or instead, um, you know, as I mentioned, if we bring on Aho, clearly that's going to be the only move that we can make. But he is a dynamic offensive player with great physical skills, contributes defensively, very strong mentally. Um, and only 26 years old um, would be a huge acquisition if we can bring him on board. And there's other options that we haven't even talked about and thought about. I'm just kind of looking at the younger guys on the list who are in their kind of mid-20s rather than potentially making an offer to someone who is uh, in their late 20s. Yakov Trenin, might be pronouncing that wrong, probably am from the... Predators. Might not be the greatest personality to bring into the clubhouse, but uh, does speak French and English reasonably well. What's he looking for? Oof. Less than $2 million. So, um... You know, we could go big and try to bring on Aho, or we could do something where we try to bring on Trenin and Kunin to help us on the wings. Um, obviously, the only way we're going to really be able to do this um, now that we do have a 
Mr. Arvidsson signed is um, to move on from some salary. And the most obvious contract for me to move on from, in my opinion, is Seth Jones. So um, we've got some big decisions to make in these early days of the offseason. And uh, if you've got thoughts on what we should do, what we shouldn't do, uh, would love to hear them down below. Um, but we are going to be busy with making some trades, trying to sign some free agents, trying to sign some uh, players on our team to extensions over the coming days. And then we're also going to be getting ready for the uh, upcoming draft where we can hopefully add some talent for the future. So it's going to be a exciting off season for the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks. And we will... Uh, think about it in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.